Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict. And I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my channel today. We have tons of things to talk about, all yarn and crochet related and things of that nature. But before we get into that, I would like to talk about what is on my head. So this here is called the Quicksilver Beanie. And this is a product of a tutorial that dropped this morning from Bag -A Day Crochet. And yes, I got the notification on my phone first thing this morning. I jumped up, put on a pot of coffee, grabbed a skinny yarn, grabbed my hook, and went right to town. And an hour later, this is the result. Um, so yes, some modifications that I made to it, though, were in the tutorial, she mentions 72 around. Um, I did... A partial increase row so I went from 72 to 76 um, partly because I walk around with a bun and I just naturally have a big noggin um, and yeah so oh and the other modification is if I haven't said it already I went to a six millimeter hook instead of the five and a half that was recommended um, again because I have a big head so anyway the yarn that I used was Craft Smart Value Yarn. I have lots of this left over from before uh, the, the time where Michaels changed their label from this to Loops and Threads. But in either case, the product is exactly the same. It is a full four weight yarn. I mean, it's giving me everything that I need. And I thought, you know what? This yarn would be perfect for, for this kind of beanie. Um, it is a seven ounce skein. It's 354 yards, 324 meters, um, 198 grams. The specs are exactly the same on the old skein versus the new. That's kind of why I said it. And it does call for a five and a half uh, millimeter hook, US I-9. So, um, yeah, I enjoy this. The stitch definition, though, I mean, for value yarn, it's pretty amazing. I'm just saying. I really, really enjoyed making this beanie with that yarn. Um, I made a second one for my mom, and hers is a much smaller version. I actually followed the tutorial uh, for this beanie. We used a five and a half millimeter hook. I used four weight yarn. This particular yarn is the Mainstays Anti-Pill Acrylic Yarn from Walmart in the colorway Mint. And this comes to us in 240 yards at 220 meters. It does call for a six millimeter hook, but I went down and used a five and a half millimeter hook. And the thing that I want to show you about this, this is a full skein right out of the bag. This here is what's left of a brand new skein. So I took a new skein and made the beanie and this is what's left of it. And so obviously I caked it up and yeah, I just wanted to show you how little yarn this beanie uses. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I surprised my mom with it and she was like, Juan, I am 80 years old, 80 year old women do not wear beanies. And I said, says who? I said, let's just try it on Ma. And she tried it on and she was a good sport about it. And she was like, Juan, I kind of like this. And I'm like, see, I told you. And she said, but Juan, I have one request. And I said, what's that? She says, can you make me another one? But instead of... The, the edging being the way that it is, can you make it bell out for me? And I said, absolutely. You say, I do. So I am in the process of making her yet another one of these, but she's going to have one that bells out, and I will show you that once it's done. So, yes, there's that. Okay, now what I'd like to get into are my acquisitions. So every week I go to Walmart, I am allegedly buying odds and ends for groceries and things. Like I'll go to Trader Joe's, I'll go to Aldi's, I'll go to all the places, right? But then I'll go to Walmart to hit up for all the things that I couldn't find in the other stores. Well, every time I'm in there, I make a trip to that yarn aisle without fail. It does not matter. I go to that yarn aisle. It doesn't matter how many pennies are in my pocket. I will go down that yarn aisle and I will just breathe in the inspiration, see what colors are there, touch all the things. And yes, anyway, um, such things happened recently. And this Mainstays acrylic yarn I found on the sky shelf in a three pack still wrapped in plastic. There were a couple packs there. I grabbed them. I'm like, no one's touched these? Oh, yes, they're mine. I'm putting them in the cart. 
They're two dollars and sixty six U S dollars for one skein. Yeah, I grabbed a couple of packs of those. So they went into the cart. I did a Yui, went back around, and then I noticed. Wait a minute. Um, I need to stock up on some Premier Puzzle. So if you don't know this about me, I'm a huge fan of the Premier Puzzle yarns. So um, I keep stock of every colorway. And if I run low on a particular colorway, I stock up and buy more. So I'm running, I'm running low on the ones that I'm showing you. So I went ahead and, and stocked up. So I wound up getting seven more skeins of this. It's in the colorway checkers. It's a five weight yarn, 300 meters, 200 grams. Okay, it's 328 yards, it's seven ounces, it's 100% acrylic. I love this yarn, guys. Love it. Um, the funny part about this is um, I don't even know how I got hooked on it. Like, I think a few years ago, I saw a backgammon, I bought it. I forget what I made out of it. I'm like, I really like this. But then I put it down. I never thought about it again. Until recently, I'm like, why haven't I been using this? So I went ham. I went and bought all the things. So I have seven skeins of this. And my plans for this is I want to make a boyfriend sweater. So I'm going to play around with some ideas. I'm going to try and come up with something original. I did make one a little while ago. But it was very plain, and who likes a plain boyfriend sweater? Nobody. So, yes, that's the plan for this, as of right now. I may change my mind, guys, but I will keep you updated if that changes. But yes, I really am, I love this colorway. I love all the colorways, to be honest, I'm just saying. And then the second colorway I picked up was this one. Same specs, same situation, but this colorway is called Acrostic. And it is a baby blue type situation with light grays played into there. And I got several skeins of this too because I am going to make my mother a cap that's more fitting to her age. And not matronly, but fitting for her age that looks respectable. And then I also would like to make her just a cardigan sweater out of this and I'm going to use a light brown shade maybe like a bamboo yeah maybe bamboo uh, buttons going down the front so yeah I think she's going to like that um, hopefully she doesn't come across this video because she does watch my videos under closed captioning but mom if you're watching surprise I'm making you a sweater and a hat so yes there's that um, so that's all I have for acquisitions. I do have things on their way. I'm just waiting for them to come. More specifically, do you guys remember the sale that Lion Brand had? It was um, buy six skeins for like $12. It was some ridiculously cheap price. Well, I placed that order on the 10th of October and I still haven't gotten that order yet. I've called them. I've gotten an automated response. I'm not really sure what's happening, but I'm being very patient. Um, yes, I ordered a lot of yarn that day and it wasn't just the clearance yarn. And I understand like when there's an item out of stock, they hold your whole order, but they can't even tell me that that's the case. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Have any of you guys had any issues like that with Lion Brand? They have an amazing sale right now. I want to order yarn, but I'm kind of hesitant because will I get that order? So not really sure what's going on there. I'm going to reach back out to them tomorrow. Um, I was kind of hoping to show you those acquisitions, but obviously I don't have them in my presence to be able to do so. So we're going to have to postpone that part of the situation. Um, but yeah, so that's all I have for acquisitions. Um, we'll put those acquisitions when they get here in a future video. Okay. So for few, uh, finished products, finished objects, products, things of that nature, I only have two. And there's a funny story to the first one. So Crystal dropped the tutorial for this this morning. On Saturday night, going into Sunday morning, I made my own beanie. Talk about kindred spirits. Talk about minds thinking alike. So I made this <laughs> on Saturday night going into Sunday morning. See resemblance? <laughs> The only difference is the crown. Um, I did a plain crown. 
you know, with the increases. And then once I was done increasing, I went to the ribbing. Um, the difference being I, I did uh, back post and front post uh, double crochets for my ribbing. And then, of, of course, I did the single crochet across the bottom here. And the yarn that I used was uh, Karen Jumbo Ombre. This was leftover yarn that my mom gave me. See, when she's done her skeins, she rolls them up in the ball. And then she says, here, Juan, take, take my leftovers. And so I wound up with all kinds of things like this. Um, she leaves them <laughs> in the kitchen, in the dining room, um, wherever she sees a counter space, she knows I'll pick them up. So she leaves me her leftovers and with her leftovers, I made this cap. So yes, um, I do want to say that <laughs> this kind of is a fail. And the reason why it's kind of a fail is because I did inside I mean, I'm sorry, front loop and back loop post or front and back post double crochets without realizing how rounded my head was going to look. So, yes, I'm going to put you on pause real quick and I'm going to change caps. Give me one second. OK, so this is the cap that I made on Saturday night. And tell me that I don't look like a Starbucks cake pop. I mean, look how round my head looks. There's extra volume here because of the posts that are on the inside. I, I just did not think about my process. I mean, I like the overall look, but the shape is not giving me what it needs to give me. It's just... Mm -mm. Anyway, yes, finished product, but unhappy customer. I mean, I'm sure somebody somewhere out there will appreciate, uh, you know something like this but me okay it was an experience but the funny part about it was was that just the very next day um day and a half or whatever th this tutorial comes out the quicksilver beanie i just found it to be quite amazing okay i'm going to put you on a brief pause and i'm going to come back with this beanie on and i'll tell you why i keep pausing in a minute Okay, so the reason why I keep pausing and during that is because when I made this beanie this morning, I had a head full of hair. So if you haven't noticed um, in previous videos and things, um, I used to have my hair, my hair was long to my shoulders and I had it pulled up in a rat tail type bun and my sides were always shaved. Well, I let my hair grow on the sides because I knew that eventually I wanted to cut my long hair. I've had long hair since the pandemic and I just need to close that chapter and start a new one. And if I decide in the near future to allow me to, to, to want that hair again, then I'll just allow myself to grow it out. Um, I can't get my thoughts out correctly. I do apologize for the word mix up. Um, just a lot of thoughts about this. So I pondered, do I cut it? Do I leave it alone? I just started this channel. People are getting used to me and the way I look with my hair and things. And I said to myself, I have to be true to me. You know what I mean? If I don't want the hair, then it's on me to not have it. So I went ahead and told the barber, take it off. And the barber looked at me and said, Juan, you've had this hair for like a long time. Are you sure? And I said, yes. Um, I made the mistake of bleaching my hair twice in one session. I believe it was last year. And ever since then, my hair has been fried. It's been unhealthy. The, a lot of things. So I just told the barber to take it off. And yes, I'm in my mid-40s. I am a Gen Xer. And I have salt and pepper hair and I'm proud of it. So I cut it all off. And so this is what it's giving. And I like it. Um, I'm not one to dye my hair. I mean, I did the whole hair dye thing, but then I said, after the bleaching episode, I said, I'm not dyeing it anymore. So I kind of like, I like it natural and I like my dark eyebrows. They're not dyed by the way. They're all natural. <laughs> I don't dye my eyebrows, but in either case, this here is huge because I made it to accommodate a bun that I didn't realize was eventually going to disappear. But guess what? Juan is still going to wear the beanie because Juan likes the beanie. And so, yeah, I still like it. I like it loose. Um, 
Yeah, I like it. So thank you, Crystal at Baguette Crochet. I'm going to link the tutorial in the description box. Please, guys, check it out. Thumb through it. Um, I apologize in advance if I already said all this. I just want to make sure that I got my point across. Please check out the tutorial. Okay? So, um, yes, I covered my acquisitions. Um, I want to talk about another finished product, and it's this. So, I, you, I did a... I did an infinity scarf. Um, yes, all the things just like this. Infinity. Woo! Um, I used a, it was anti pilling big twist from obviously Joanne's 199 yards of skein. I had two skeins left over. I began using the skein with this. This is the stitch beanie, uh, stitch sampler beanie, and yes, I made this before I started YouTube, and I showcased this in the very first video, um, and I believe it was when I said, "I'm sorry, I can't put it on because I didn't want to mess up my hair." So yes, I started the skein here, and then the balance of whatever I had left went to this, and. I'm still practicing on how to wear these. I'm not one for the fufu or the zhuzh. I just, yeah, I think that's how you're supposed to wear it. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but yes, the colorway is inclusivity and it is anti peeling. And yeah, it feels awesome. Anyway, so that is a finished object that I did. I, I love it, by the way. I love the rainbow and all the colors and all the things. Just please omit the pink. And I'm sorry to the pink lovers. Listen, somebody's got to save all the pink for you guys. And I am team save the pink for everyone else. So there you have it. Okay. So a couple of things that I want to update you guys on. Um, I have all of my socials finally linked all together in one place. I do have a link tree. I have, let's see. I have a Facebook page. It's finally up and running. The link is in the description and in my link tree. Um, so please feel free to jump on there and join. It's gonna be lots of fun, just like it is here and all the things. Um, I have an Instagram, I have a TikTok. Um, there's nothing on the TikTok yet. I'm really not versed well on the TikTok, but I will play with it and kind of figure out some things because uh, I've been getting requests. Hey Juan, why are you not on TikTok? So more specifically, these people that are asking me about the TikTok know me in real life. So they're like, Juan, you should have a TikTok. <laughs> and when I get suggestions in real life, I kind of have to listen because I see them in real life every day. So anyway, um, all my socials are up and running. Please go to, to my description box and feel free to join whatever it is that you'd like to join. Um, I'm trying to get everything lined up in terms of like what the expectations are for that fan page. Um, but as of right now, I just want to get everybody on there. Um, and I want to share my content. I want to see what you guys have been making. Um, I think I'm going to try and restrict it to just items that are made on my channel. But I kind of like the creativity that other people possess. So I may turn around and say, you can show me what you're making. You can show everyone on the page what you're making so long as you're not advertising or trying to sell anything. Um, so I'm still trying to iron those details out, but I definitely want to see everyone's creations. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know more about that later on. Um, what else? I did get a PO box because I've had requests. Say hey, Juan, why don't you have a PO box? You should have a P.O. box. You're growing very quickly. You should have some sort of snail mail situation that, you know, is there in case somebody wants to use it. So I went and got a P.O. box. So you guys feel free to send the happy mail. Um, I will make sure to not include last names or anything specific. I do respect confidentiality. So if you want to remain anonymous, just make sure to put that on there as well. I am a Gen Xer. As I said before, I do like snail mail. I do like handwritten notes and things. I do like to go touch grass and not be on technology all the time. 
Um, so I know I just had to throw it in there. <laughs> um, but yes, so I do like all of the things um, in terms of being able to outreach and things like that. So yes, check out the description box. You'll see the info. Please update yourself on all of that. Obviously, I don't have my address or phone number on there. I don't think anyone should, just for their own safety. Um, but yeah, enough about that. So, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the responses that I got for, from the Q&A. So, after I posted the video, the questions still kept coming in. So, I understand that we're not all in the same time zone, so I respect that, and I still want to be able to have another Q&A session. Um, do you guys prefer a video or would you just like the responses in the thread in, in the YouTube page? Uh, please let me know in the comments. I mean, the majority will probably win. I might just put a poll out there. I'm not exactly sure. But there were a lot of really good questions and I feel like if they're left unanswered, they're only gonna keep being, they're gonna keep being asked. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, happens to be, um, yeah, so I want to, first of all, thank you guys for the mass exodus of, no, exodus isn't the right word. Um, my channel's growing very quickly, right? So... I just want to put into perspective how fast it's growing compared to how I thought it was going to grow. So when I first started my channel, my first video, I said that I had no followers, right? And it didn't matter if I didn't have any because I was doing this for myself, which is true. Like, I just want to be able to put my art out there into the world, right? So um, what happened shortly thereafter, I think after a couple hundred... Um, bag of day came across my channel and then put my face on the map and basically gave me an opportunity to just be seen and it just it's like a domino effect like people see me and then other people see me and then more people see me and so I knew that I was like I, I knew that there was some growth there and the goal was for me to be at 5,000 by Halloween now, if you told me then that I'd be almost double that by Halloween, I would have thought you're telling me a joke. You're telling me stories here. But yes, I am less than 1K away from 10,000. Actually, hundreds. I think I'm like 700 away from 10,000 follow subscribers. Followers. Subscribers. Um... The number doesn't matter to me. What matters is that you guys are genuinely interested in what it is I'm showing you. Um, and I've gotten nothing but love and support back from all of you guys. So you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Um, with that comes the responsibility of making sure that my ducks are in a row. Like, there's a responsibility to being seen. And those of you guys who have platforms and you're watching me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I want to make sure that you know, I do things the right way in terms of just being authentically myself and allowing this platform to be a place for inclusivity and a place for, you know, sharing and all of the things. So, you know, I'm, I'm very humble in the fact that like, I understand like this is a big thing for me because let's be honest, like, I wasn't one all into the socials, right? Like, I just got those other social medias because of this YouTube. As far as Facebook is concerned, like, I've only had a couple hundred friends since I opened my YouTube, or my Facebook account back in 2007. And I've never had as many people paying attention to me as I do now. So it's a little bit of, like, a shock um, in a good way. And it's just, I want to make sure that I'm responsible with it. So I care about the people who watch me and I want to make sure that what I'm showing you is the best version of what I'm showing you possible. So I'm always welcome to feedback. I, I take constructive feedback very well. I have a very thick skin 
And yeah, so my aim is to just continuously grow and get better at my craft, get better at talking to you guys, and better at being able to share content with you guys. So I'm welcome to any and all feedback that you guys have to give me. Um, so yes, with that, I'm going to conclude this yarn talk situation and we are going to postpone anything else until an another video. So that's all I have guys. If you liked what it is that we shared today, what we talked about, feel free to hit like, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and also hit that bell to stay up to date and in tune with all things one and one yarn addicts related. And until the next one guys, take care.